So I was hoping to find out Alba CBH1 two channel, whatever they are, 200 milliwatt walkie talkie. But uh, as I said before, we've got quite a lot of stuff in storage at the moment because of building work. And so what I have dug out is my Hario WT1, which is the same thing. These are also the same radio as the Harvard 020 and the Binatone Ranger 2. So in Binatone's range of radios, you had the Ranger 2, then the Long Ranger 6, the Long Ranger 12, and the Long Ranger 40. And the 6, 12, and 40 are all basically the same set, but the 40, of course, has 40 channels and an LED readout, and the other are 6 and 12 channels respectively, but they are synthesized with exactly the same synthesizer. And they all work, those three work very well. Now these type of sets, uh, the WT1, the Alba, the Harvard 020 and Bandatone 2, they work better than any of the others like this. Now we did the Domico or we did the Chiser 1 plus 1 which are atrocious and you're lucky if you get 50 feet on them. But we have had up to 7 eighths of a mile on this type of radio which you know, fair enough. So this particular one, although the box is tatty, it has come with an instruction leaflet. So it tells us it's 200 milliwatts. And we get to know some Q codes. Great. No squirk it diagram. I was pleased to get the box with that when I bought it. We obviously have played with this because it's got an RS rechargeable battery in. Uh, no, uh, rechargeable batteries are not ideal in these um, if you're wanting maximum range it's alright if you're just uh, you know, putting an aerial up uh, left a bit, right a bit, align it a bit that kind of thing and you, you know where they are but if you're wanting absolute maximum range it needs to be a 9 volt alkaline battery as ever battery contacts can be iffy now that's very similar circuit appears in the Alba. No, I'm lying. This is the this is the Alba circuit in the Amstrad HCB1, which is used on the Shira WT622, and we may be able to we may do that tomorrow with this time, and also it appears in the Harvard 104 convoy, and they're much chunkier sets, but it's a similar circuit. We've had an up, we have actually had up to three miles on an Amstrad HCB1 on 200 milliwatts. Now we're doing tests at the moment on our difficult terrain route, so it involves going a mile and a half to the top of the hill, so that's fine, and then you drop down the other side to Scratchy Corner, so that's your two mile point. And sets like this are just are not going to work two miles away down the wrong side of a hill and, and it's really you're going to need 500 milliwatts to have a cat in hell's chance of doing that so there's never any point going further than the top of the hill with these so yes we've got the proper service manual are you all impressed at the time I wrote, and you did in those days, you wrote to every supplier of CB radios to try and buy service manuals. And some, just a lot of them just didn't have service manuals. And the only ones which were free, the costs were usually between £16.99 and pff, they're usually between. Sixteen ninety nine and six pounds fifty the service manuals, but uh, 
I requested uh, Rotel uh, of, of manuals, and they sent me all three free. How good was that? I spent a good thousand quid on service manuals, I promise you. At the time. What screws I missed? Take the PTT bar out and don't lose it. Oh yeah, you've just got to shuffle this past the... That's it. So it's not that difficult to, uh, in serviceability. And you'll see that the manufacturer of this is quite clearly the same people who did the 40 channel Alva CVH2 and the um, Harrier WT2 and the Harvard 410T. It's clearly the same manufacturer. And of course, we know they also made the Eurosonic Euro 1, Eurosonic Euro 2, and Alba CVM1 with the slider controls. So you have four crystals which you can't adjust individually in line with other cheap products. So we'll need to set our power supply for 9 volts. There we go. So working on things like that is a faff because you haven't got extension speaker sockets you haven't got extension aerial sockets, you haven't got anything to make it easy. So to be absolutely spot on we're going to have to remove the loading coil aren't we? Or, sol or solder to the other side of it. So that grey wire is the antenna output. But that's in nice condition. A bit dusty, it's been on my shelf. So, your limit spec is 180 milliwatts. Sensitivity, <laughs> sensitivity is supposed to be half a microvolt but 4 microvolts would be acceptable. It's a single conversion receiver with the I over 455 circuit description so we're not going to because we're using a synod meter we're not going to be doing um, a sweep generator method we don't need to do that when we get to receive Uh, transmitter alignment, we're looking at T3, 4 and 5 for maximum output and then you'll just T6 for the correct frequencies of both channels you have to take an average there we'll give you a printed circuit board blank so we can make our own, couldn't we? great these were £24.99 each or they did you a pair for something like um, Forty-five pounds for a pair, something like that. So that's the circuit. Now I had an early production Harvard, and it came with channel fourteen and nineteen, uh, but these come with fourteen and thirty, which is a bit more useful. you're away from calling channel with 30. Right, so what did we say? We needed to T3, T4, T5. So three, four, five, three, four, 
five. And how do they propose you connect it? Connect the RF power meter to the antenna terminals before the loading coil. I think to be spot on we'll take the loading coil out. So it's glued in just uh, just for a laugh. And just to make it worse the glue's over the terminals. And you know this some of this glue can become conductive, can't it? I mean I've no proof that this one does, but uh, some can. The last thing you want to do is to snap the very thin wiring away. Don't think the center contact's got anything going to it. Right, so we need to solder a little bit of thin wire, which we'll find on a scrap chassis. I'll just look at the circuit diagram to make sure I'm putting it in the right place. Looks like it goes straight to the PTT. Yes, it does. So if that's on camera, we've got the aerial, the loading coil and the PTT switches between transmitter and receiver.
if you didn't want to know the figures, you could just tune this up with a grid dip meter or a, or a field strength meter. I'll have that wire a bit shorter than that. I don't want it to become an aerial. So, we should have a handy BNC lead. Put that between the test set and this radio under test. We've got a handy screen plate there. There we go. So if we now connect our power Hooray. so I'll switch picture in picture on we'll go to the 3 watt scale the radio is supposed to be doing 200 milliwatts uh, when it's working, so on the 3 watt scale, that would be 3, that would be 1, that's half, that's 100 milliwatts, so 200 milliwatts is just there. Now which channel shall we tune this up on? We're going to tune it up on 30, so that's the lower channel, and that's what it's currently on. So I'll press transmit, and we've got 2789154, which doesn't sound to be far wrong. I'm sure we've still got a frequency chart from an instruction book on here. So with the telescopic aerial fully extended and in free space on the gap between this bench and the next, When I key up, we have a field strength being shown. So we want maximum field strength. So the coil I've just put back in is that one. No, it's not. It's that one with the wax in it. No reason to suspect this needs altering, but here we go. We have gained some ground. Good. So that can go back on the top shelf. And all we need to do is try and coax it back together. I think we'll put the PTT bar back next just in case. There we go. that one screw there and then when you put the back on the, these go through the board if this product malfunctions try a new battery but comparing the quality of this to the D'Amico stroke chiser is chalk and cheese apart, absolutely unbelievable. And when you compare this to the realistic TRC 1003, they're worlds apart as well. We've had three miles on a 50 milliwatt realistic TRC 1003, 
And the 1006 is the same board, which was later. The 1003 is the white one, and the battery test light works, which it jolly well ought to. So there we are. You do have a squelch. Whether or not we can make that come on by turning up the signal generator and putting the output somewhere near. It's not adjustable, it's preset. But it works. So there we have it, the Harvard, I was going to say 020, I'm doing the Harrier WT1, 24.99 in 1981. So we'll be doing a field test with this with Mr. Chippy in the next few days and he'll have the body cam with him. I think tonight's field test will be the 500 milliwatt DNT HF12 stroke 3, the 3 channel one. We've got the Midland 3 channel one uh, which I'll be working on in the next few days as well. And I think they are, I, I just think they really are 2 watts. They're, they're quite decent anyway. That's it, thank you.